I still alive and am I still alive? Uh, so Godot crashed and like took out all of my applications with it, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Godot 4! <laughs> yeah, so Godot 4 like hard crashed and also took out the rest of my Godot applications. So that's pretty cool. Look at that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Kill it. Oh jeez. Oh, and it didn't even close itself correctly. <laughs> Look at that. It's not stable though, yeah. Uh, so let's, let's kill it with the task manager, by the way. If I can find it. That's probably not very good. FaceTracker.exe is still running, which is pretty cool. Oh no, okay. That'll do it. Alright, bring me back. We can run this. Uh, oh, we can also start the, the stream stuff again. Look at that. I even updated it so it auto-refreshes the, the stream key. Well, not really the stream key, but the access token. Let me see. There we go. Everything kind of broke after it crashed. <laughs> we break, yes. Godot 4, hard crashed. I guess the, the renderer just kind of broke itself, I think. Let's see if it happens again. If it happens again, that'll be the end of the stream. <laughs> Alright, so this is where we're at. Look at that. It's beautiful. So let's give it a run, I guess. Fingers crossed we don't crash. Ooh, all right. We're in. Look at that. It's beautiful, exactly how I remembered it. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, which one of these caused it to look so blown out? Was it the fog? Oh, it's pretty grim. Uh, is it not the fog? Why does it look so bad? Oh, it's the energy. And then sky auto exposure should probably be on, to be honest. How do I make this look less bad? This looks horrible. <laughs> can you duck too hard is the question. You can never duck too hard. If anything, I'm not ducking hard enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is probably as good as it's gonna get. Why does it look so bad in the editor? But like, when I actually load it in, in the scene, it looks... Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just need more lights. Just add more lights forehead. Like, have some weird shiny materials in the background. And then it'll all just work. Yeah. Oh. Anyways, we're gonna close it now. Let's, let's upload everything I've done to GitHub. Git status. Don't really know what I changed, but that's good enough for me. Git commits. Oh, a few. Few uh, world environment changes. So we'll just push it straight to my branch. Yeah, and then eventually, I suppose I'll just need to get this import VRM stuff working, right? Or I wonder. Right before we do that, <laughs> let's just let's just see if we can import the no, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's import the, the VRM stuff, so enable it. Unable to load add-on script from path, blah, blah, blah. Disabling to prevent further errors. Eh. Unexpected identifier and class body. Eh. Where? Tool. Tool. Eh. 
Is this not Godot 4? Excuse me? Constant values is script which is loaded but not compiled. Yeah. Do these all just need to be modified to be tool? Cannot find base class editor scene importer. Hold on. So the problem with this is that we're not able to load these in dynamically, which is why I've been holding off on this for so long. What? Format importer? What? <laughs> what? Is this okay? Can I do this? Spatial material. Oh my god. What is this? I thought they, um... I thought they imported, or I, I thought they, they fixed their, uh... They updated their stuff. So Godot VRM, I thought master was updated. So add-ons. Updated to la latest master. Import. Hey. I don't know. Doesn't seem to work. <laughs> this is painful. Do I not have... Oh, you know what? You know what? I think I know what I did. I think I, I broke a few things I shouldn't have. I'm pretty sure I'm on the wrong branch. That's what's happening. <laughs> so let's go back to Godot VRM, and then we'll be able to load in the... Yeah, I'm on the wrong branch. Get checkout. Alright, so send me. What I'm trying to do right now is load in one of the, the VTuber models. Technically, my model is already a VTuber model, but... We'll ignore that. By VTuber model, I'm meaning like the, the anime stuff that the kids are into nowadays. So, drop these all into here. This should already be fine. Unable to load, blah. Transient parent has another thing. That's fine. No, it's not fine. Loaded, not compiled. Import VRM. What's your problem? Spatial. Cannot find base class editor scene importer. Excuse me? Hey. Go to master, which is Godot 4, add ons, VRM, import VRM. Editor scene importer. Oh my god. They changed it. They changed the API within like the past two weeks. That's tough. Well, doesn't seem like I'll be able to do that today. I, I don't know what the correct format is. Right, editor. Editor scene format importer, I guess. And then identifier. Maybe actually, editor, if we just, editor scene format importer, import scene. Does this exist? Oh, maybe, maybe we're getting there. If I just go through and change all these to the correct thing. VRM top level. We are on top level. This needs to be. I guess that's fine. Springbone. VRM top level not declared in the current scope. It's a class name. That's fine, I think. Yeah, because all these errors are just VRM top level is not here. VRM top level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just a resource. Collider group also a resource, but needs VRM top level. Uh, so if I just close this, open it up again, hopefully it will just work. Sometimes you need to do that because uh, I need the editor to refresh its class hierarchy that it knows about. So go into project settings, plugins, enable. Ah! What's your problem? So we look at VRM top level. You're okay. Yeah, Springbone, you're fine. Oh, you're always fine. You are fine. You are all right. You, Collider Group, no problems. Plugin, oh. add scene import plugin, not found in base self. Eh. All right, what's inside editor plugin? We can do this really quickly. Uh, add scene format importer plugin. Add scene format import plugin. 
add scene format importer plugin. Add scene format importer plugin. Remove. I'm assuming that this is just remove. So if we do remove. Yeah, that might be it. That might be it. So we'll go here, enable this. Then I'll grab the Alicia thing that I just have in OpenCPHGD. Assets, VRM models. Just grab this folder. Go back to dev VSS assets. Drop you in here. Now, moment of truth. Ooh, takes a little bit. Takes a little bit. Ooh. Did I do it? So go to assets, Alicia. Uh, <laughs> which one do I pick? Uh, let's try this one. Hopefully we don't crash. Ooh. He's done it. We're T-posing. Look at that. So that's what that will look like. We'll save this under entities. Uh, I guess we'll just drop this in here. This has a script attached to it, by the way. VRM top level? Why does this have a script attached to it? Funny duck? Oh, hello. It is a funny duck. Usually the duck is also being face tracked, like so. Not like so. Like this. Look at this. Wee. <laughs> Usually the duck is being fa face tracked using this face tracker like that. Wait for my yeah, there we go. Look at this. Wee. So I, I wrote all of this in uh, Godot. And so right now I'm trying to port it to Godot 4. Uh it's going very poorly so far, to be sure. Let's see. I guess I can get rid of this. Like, this is a VRM top level. Uh, but let's load in base model.gd. Should be fine. Yeah, yeah, that should be fine. We'll go into. Are you a programming duck VTuber? Are you programming a duck VTuber? I am programming, I guess, just VTubing software. <laughs> Uh, that works with more or less any model that you throw at it. So this is just a basic 3D model uh, that happens to also be rigged. So it will work with any 3D model that is rigged. So it will, let me demonstrate, this will also work with that anime model that you just saw. It does happen, it does have a habit of breaking your, your neck every time you change models. So, yeah, this is what this is what I'm trying to get working in Godot for right now. Uh, I'm not specifically trying to make VTubers, um, but it's just nice. Uh, it's a nice project to have because at the time when I started it, there was no other piece of software that did, uh, or there was no other piece of software that was free and open source uh, that also did this in this way. <laughs> Actually, I guess V Magic Mirror is free and open source as well, but it does have a pro version. But this one is the pro version. <laughs> but I really just started doing it just to see like if I could. And here we are. Uh, more or less completely functional in Godot 3. Now trying to see if I can make this completely functional in Godot 4. Uh, I do need to stop tracking here, so I'll wait for it. Uh, there we go. And then we'll grab this, say goodbye to the duck, delete the duck node, load in the Alicia entity. Takes a little bit. Her meshes did not load in properly, that's really cool. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What? Hello? What happened to the meshes? 
Okay. Now you saw it before. We had we had the meshes here, and now there's no more mesh. This is nightmare for Yeah, these are just the bones. Look at that. Look how many bones this model has for like the skirts. The the part of the model you'll never see. That's crazy. And also, I would like to the point out that the model technically has bones for uh, <laughs> has technically has boob bones. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what happened, so let's see if I can just grab the mesh. Maybe it's still here? Not in the duck. Nope. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's really weird how the, the they just kind of went away. Huh. I do know that in my... Like, Godot 3 implementation, I actually take that script that's preloaded on it and then just throw it away. But maybe the Godot 4 script depends on something else? Hmm. Either way, I think I need to just get rid of that. Because nothing will show up there, right? But if I go into... If I open up... This? Maybe? Hold on. Instantiate child scene. Alicia. VRM. Uh, now it's just completely broken? Huh? What happened? Does it need the materials? There's no, there's no mesh for me to uh, assign to it anymore. Did something break? Did something break that I should Did I touch something I shouldn't have touched? It's, it's very possible that I did that. Uh, I don't know. What happens if I look at this? Import the scene. Alright. Somewhat cursed. That's okay, though. Re-import. Wait, no. This has... Look at that. <laughs> I hate that. Is this wrong, actually? Oh, is this why it, it fails to import? Is because it's, it's looking for the wrong type? So this should be a node 3D. Right? Re-import. Maybe. Perhaps. So that's node 3D. So this looks more correct. I guess that's okay. So if, if I if I do this now, VRM, where did the meshes go? Why do, why do I keep losing the meshes? Hmm. All right. So something that we can do here is I open this up and then just export all of the set this mesh save paths and we can save it set paths just like that. So now we should have all the meshes just hanging out, right? I think I forgot to actually export the, the meshes. So set, I just say this hello Koji Bear. Hello, hello. Uh, set mesh save pads. Select, set pads, re-import. Okay, there are all the me meshes, so we can kind of cheat. Why is this so dark? Look at it. It's getting slowly... I'm not doing anything, by the way. This is just the, the Godot renderer <laughs> brightening up the scene physically. How's it going? It's going okay. I got... I ported this piece of software from Godot 3 to Godot 4. Uh, Godot 4 is not currently out. There's not even an alpha yet, alpha yet so I'm just doing the... kind of the raw build, and you can, you can see how well that's going. Very poorly. Uh, body top. Yes. Alright, I guess we're just gonna load these all in one by one. Under. Oh, don't look. <laughs> I think that's lewd. Alright, we need the neck. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but I, yeah, I've just been very slowly losing my mind trying to figure out how to do all this. I think the problem was I didn't have all the cloth on the model. So for whatever reason, they did model like an under. <laughs> Uh, not against TOS since anime girls are not real people. Very sorry, weebs. But it do be like that sometimes. Alright, I baked chonk. You do be chonky though. I do appreciate that you remember the, <laughs> the, the commands. Let's see, that's the face. Let's see. Flaunt hair? Flaunt hair? I don't know what a flaunt hair is, but we have it. Alright, what is the other? Yes. Other. And then last one, which is other two. Alright, so let's give this a save. Mm, go back to display screen. Alright, looking pretty good. Very bright. Uh, so let's send it. Pretty far away. Uh, also, does not appear to be working. A terrible memory, but I remember that. <laughs> Much appreciated. You remember the the most important two characters, or the most important two words? Chonk jump. You do be chonky though. Model parents. What script do you have? Yeah, so like there is a skeleton and we should be applying stuff to it. Hold on. Let's delete Alicia solid. We don't need you. Instead we will rubber duck. Duck dot text scene. So this is the duck. He's very bright as usual. So I know the duck works, right? Yeah, the duck works. It looks pretty bad, but it's okay. Because I didn't port everything over yet. Hmm. Huh. Oh, hello, Arrow Axe. Thank you very much for the raid. You caught me at a very strange time in my life. <laughs> How was your stream? If you want to stick around and tell me about it, otherwise I understand. I must be very tired. So you double, you win. Well, you know, you win sometimes. Yeah, this is in Godot 4. So what I'm doing is I'm rewriting my VTuber render. Uh, so right now, this application that you see frozen on screen right now, that is the Godot 3 version. What you see right now that is actually tracking my face is it running in Godot 4. Um, so, you know. Probably hang out a bit. Saga Do 4, oh baby. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, so it kind of works, kind of works. Uh, the problem is that with the more complicated VRM models, it's not really doing what I think it should be doing. So first of all, we do need to flip you around. VRM models are or I guess it starts backwards for whatever reason. Wait, does your neck still snap? It does still snap, yeah. So the neck snapping is actually a symptom, or that's just from the uh, the face tracker, right? The face tracker gives me data that is slightly incorrect. <laughs> I can't tell if it's actually working, but I'm not getting any errors, I think. Oh, jeez. Trying to make some progress on stuff from my tower defense game. Ended up redoing this same thing a bunch though. Feels bad, man. Hmm. I remember you were working on the. There was like a 3D tower defense game with randomly generated stuffs. Randomly generated levels, is it? Mazes? Uh, 3D precision tower defense. Yeah, I remember things sometimes. Let's see. There's, I, I know that there was a few things I needed to do, especially for VRM models. But I, I 
need to see what it is first. So I'm gonna cheat and look at my own code. I'm trying to get something in to get the enemies to have space between them and it kept breaking in crazy ways. Mm, crazy ways. <laughs> Cheetos flying to heaven. All good Cheetos go to heaven. Not to equate Cheetos with puffers, by the way. Hmm. Transition adjustment. Yeah, I, I guess like is your do your enemies move on like a, a physics are they are they affected by physics? Is that the question? Would that explain why sometimes they just decide to leave the bounds of this earth? You know, same TBH. Translation adjustment, these all need to be rotated around. No, but that's it. Why isn't this letting me rotate the model? Hmm. I wanted it to be adaptive based off their speed, so I was trying to use an area on the spawn. They didn't want to spawn right, though. Hmm. I have... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like it would be pretty tricky if you're trying to write something that adapted to specific values on them. Did you ever figure it out? Kinematic bodies and they're colliding with each other. I found the issue at the end. Pretty sure it was a timer I had for starting a wave. It was barely longer than the time it took them to spawn. Thank you, Koji, for redeeming a hydrate. All right, let's drink some water. I've been just drinking the tea and coffee for the, the entire stream. Ugh. R.I.P. Bladder. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I've drank like, uh, like three liters over the course of this stream. <laughs> uh, for example, I was putting an instant start note at the start, but for whatever reason I decided I never wanted to actually be at the start, stop in the corner, but acted like it was at the start until an enemy walked into it and the game started dying. Mm. Is it because, I've had this happen before where if you spawn a lot of things that are that could possibly collide with each other, then they'll just kind of like fly off into the distance. Well, you said that you were using um, kinematic bodies, so that's probably not true. Don't know. Hard to say, sometimes the the most common things I found is, is like if you spawn things that can collide with each other, then they'll just go flying. And the second thing is if you spawn things at the the wrong place in the scene tree, then they'll also kind of not work correctly. I wonder what's going on here. There's no output. New out new offsets saved. I figured now that was what was happening with the enemies. I figured that uh, at the end. The start was just a mesh instance with an area, though. Mm. Never figure out why the start wouldn't spawn right, but by moving it after my maze generation, it spawned correctly. Is it possible that however you were spawning your maze uh, affected... I guess the... Uh, I'm assuming that when you spawn in your maze walls, you're like iterating over a node, right? So if your start area was is within that same node, hierarchy in that node hierarchy, then it would be affected by the, the spawning algorithm as well. The maze is all within a grid map. Mm. Oh, no. I don't ever use grid maps. Anyways, I think it says, by the way, that I've only been streaming for 20 mine, nearly 30 minutes, but Godot 4 did hard crash on me, so it did take down pretty much everything on my stream, which is very cool. Thank you, Godot 4. should be listening to me, but it's not. So we look at this. Ooh, that didn't look good. <laughs> so like, this looks pretty good, but for whatever reason, this environment doesn't stick around when I actually start. Just going off grid mat toss. It started as set by a random start end function I made. I was originally spawning to start there, like starting at the end, spawning the end. Well, yeah, it, it depends on where you spawn. Well, I don't know. 
Well, actually, if you're spawning them in on the grid map, and then you're also affecting the grid map based off of um, your generation algorithm, wouldn't that also affect your starting ends? So you would want to put them at the end of your generation, not the very start of it? Make it a feature and call the emergency streamer privacy feature. Yeah, just have a button that seg faults the, the program and then causes Windows to just dump all of the corresponding Godot programs. It's like the same thing as just like pulling out the plug from your, your PC. Hmm. I'm trying to think. What would I want to do here? I can do... Wait. Headbone ID set. Oh, uh, you know what? This probably does not have the correct headbone set. So, headbone, I think this is uppercase H. I think. What is it called? That's why it's not moving, right? So, where is the head? Head, 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 head. Yeah, uppercase H. So, if I start this again, press play, now it might work. Let's wait for it. It's very. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it's very far away, and we're stuck in a T-pose. And also, most of the rotation stuff is kind of broken. But there we go. This is thing I'm just insisting. Grid maps are so annoyingly limited. Especially it just randomizes the start location and answers the start note as, the, as a child of the parent with call deferred and sets its translation at the start. Mm, to the start. Well, neat. Neat, neat, neat. <laughs> You said a lot of things. They seem like they make sense. I got kind of lost in all the steps, but it sounds like you have everything put together. Yeah. Anyways, I fixed it. Uh, I suppose I, I do need to change this based on whether or not this is a VRM model or not. Because if I go back and load in the duck, the duck will actually will not work anymore because this is hard coded. Is rambling. No, I'll feel you. Sometimes you do be rambling, sometimes. Huh. It do happen sometimes. I'm very much the same way. Yeah, when, you, when you've been banging your head against a problem for a long time. Just want to tell someone about it. <laughs> hmm. So I. Model display screen. This looks correct, but for some reason I'm just losing the entire world environment whenever I... Yeah. See, look, this is what it should be looking like. But then I lose the Omni-Light for some reason. Like, like I can increase the radius. <laughs> so we just bathe the model in light. That looks horrible, though. Hmm. And then also the rotation values for looking up and looking down. Look, or I guess pitch and roll are wrong. But I already knew that already. Huh. So let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. And also, it's still very, very far away from the camera, even though the camera should be, like, right here. Right, so if I click on the camera, click preview. Actually, that's about... As expected. That's about as expected. Let's reset your transform. We should actually be... Well, let's not. Just move you really close to the camera. You look really overexposed. I don't know why it looks so overexposed here, but when I start the scene, it doesn't look so super overexposed. Right? Hmm. But anyways, I think some people would be interested in looking at this. <laughs> or I know I know some people who would be interested in this. Uh, which is pretty much just the, the people who wrote the, the VRM import library. Um, that I usually have to make modifications to. And I still have to make modifications to. <laughs> if I want it to work in Godot 4. Uh, so, I got a lot of work ahead of me if I want to actually port it. But this will be nice. You know what? Let's start recording. <laughs> let's re let's record something really quick. I'll record a really s short snippet and then I'll post it on their Discord. I'm sure they'll be happy. All right, I'm cutting my mic. Wait, 
cutting the mic and the music for like five seconds. We're back. <laughs> I think I remember hearing something about world environment defaults being messed with uh, in 4.0, but just vaguely. Yeah, yeah, they, the world environment stuff is a lot different in 4.0. There's actually some really cool stuff uh, with the world environment stuff, right? So if you look here, we can go to... Uh, this is probably my favorite one, not this one. The, we want to get rid of some parts. Wait, there's too much fog. Why is there so much fog now? Eh, turbidity. Let's see. I don't know. Like, physical sky seems really cool. Because it gives you all these kind of real terms that allows you to, I don't know, do sky stuff. But right now it's looking a bit whack. I don't know what's going on. It was working before. <laughs> I blame Gitto. Auto exposure. Looks a bit better without it on, I guess. Mm. Slap some fog in it? Eh. I mean, we could slap even more fog into it, yeah? Oh. Wait, what? Where'd the, where, where did all the fog go? Oh, is it getting darker? What, what's happening with the camera? Oh, is the, like is like the camera like auto exposing itself? That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, this does not work when you actually run it. Oh, and also it's gonna break. Oh, geez. Actually, no, it's not. Uh, I have accidentally spawned multiple face tracker.exe processes. That's weird. This wasn't working before, but now it is. 